Okay, it's a few days later. I'm gonna get, it's Monday actually. I'm gonna get back into that project. Beautiful day again. I'm gonna keep you updated on the discs. You're gonna see the finished result there. Filling the water right now. Just walking over, see so yeah, how that goes. Gotta cut some more stone this afternoon. Might put that in the bit. Oh uh, yeah, kia ora. welcome to my life. Um, cause I'm a genius, I managed to, when I glued the saw, when I glued the stone down last time, I um, ran out of super glue and normally I would use builder's bog, but um, yeah, I ran out of super glue and then decided I was like, I'm going to try PVA and then put PVA. And then of course the stone moved while I was cutting it and I've been to saw blade. So long story short, um, I drove to Waipawa to see the homie. Um, and got a new saw blade and now i've realized that um i think i can put a 24 inch blade on the saw because uh, it's hard to admit that that happened on um anyway so i bent this blade um i can actually put the 24 inch um saw blade on because i'll show you So I did manage to bend my saw blade, but then I also realized when I got a new saw blade from my friend that I can put a blade that's four inches bigger on my saw. So that's what I've gone and done. So I'm just going to test that. I got no guard on it though, but it's going to, um, it's going to be spinning a lot faster and hopefully it's going to speed up my process and I can just get another guard made for this one and I'm just lining this cut up and then I'm gonna fix it down with um, my bracket it's just an old bracket you get a lot of use out of it eh it's been cut through with the saw too because it you know sometimes it lines up in a funny way Tighten. See, it's getting pretty tight. Tighten. Not going anywhere. Double. So what I'm looking at is look at this blade. This blade is massive. I just had my guard flipped up. Jammed the hose in here. And um, yeah, she should just cut. It's an old blade, but it'll go. Watch it cut stone. Okay, so I just glued all these stones down uh, using an adhesive, I'll show you. Just this stuff, I had pretty good luck with these sort of um, fix everything, bond everything. They're, it's actually like an elastic glue. Um, but I find that works tight as, so these stones have all been glued, ready to be cut. And then they would, you know, be turned into things like this. So we just come and into this. So some of the stone that was being cut outside the other day, it's all here, pause, and then been a bit more sword. So as you can see, I'll just move this. Some things. It's, I think this is the same. Yeah. Just. As you can see, everything works in batches. Work through slowly but surely. I just collected some of the stones from here and took them outside, and had some good luck changing that saw blade. So I'm pretty happy with that. Also, this is currently the state of my bench, so. You see there's a lot of wax everywhere, so. It's 
So these are all huia. Um, this is kind of like a, a bird form. And then these are huia flying across his back. And this is meant to be kind of like the um, kurawai cloak coming on through the shoulders. And then here is the big talon of um, one of the birds, which also acts as the foot. So we've got two manaya on the shoulder, manaya on the ear, manaya on the other, as the other ear merging into the head, coming into the mouth. But yeah, as you can see, many layers, lots of um, digging, and there's a lot of work to do on the back there. I got a bit carried away, but. This one's, you know, for example, is ready to be cast. Maybe I'll have a little look at some some areas, but I'll do a little bit of a clean up in the bronze as well um, as the final master, and then that will be the master that the molds will come from. So this is like a multiple mold process. It's essentially if you get like a um, a photocopier and you photocopy something three dimensional at different stage, and then you make um changes to it so you can see like i've been carving these forms a lot so the same bird we have the bird catching the fish over here and you'll find that it's the same birds um same flow same form just incorporated on this has like a crab like feel as well but yeah, just an update on this table. I haven't touched these. I've been mainly cutting stone and doing this. So, um, <laughs> Calder. Um, yeah, doing this. So, just a little update. You can see work in progress. This is what it looks like. This is my eyes from above. I'm excited to get these into metal. It's going to be really fun. Okay, another day, another day, another dollar. Okay, I'm gonna cut more stone. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a human error, like I said yesterday, I bent my saw blade, but then I realized I could put a 24 inch saw blade on my saw. So that's what I did. I got one from the homie. Placed it on there, and now we are all go, but we have gone even more garage project. I'm gonna show you what I've done. I mean, you just saw it on the clips before, but yeah, let's get into it, early morning. I'm just trying to line up the saw blade by eye. See that? Boom, on that line. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting here. But when I line that, I lined it here on this line, fixed the base, and then I actually pushed the stone over just to double check this line, and it was out by about two mils here. So I undid this bit here and slid it two mils that way, and then I'm gonna fix it in position, and then I'm gonna lift the saw back over and start here, and I'm gonna start cutting towards this direction because this was my slab that I actually managed to angle cut, you can see there by accident, which is a big shame, but it's just an accident and that kind of thing happens when you are handmade, you know, made in Aotearoa. I can only do my best as the machines that I have. This is a really old saw. Um, but as you can see, boom, boom, boom there. And we've got this beast of a blade on. That's the old little one. But yeah, I'll show you how that goes. Okay, well, it's somewhat hectic. Look at the guard sitting there. Look at that blade. This guard is for a 20 inch saw blade. This is 24. And I just did this.
rained a lot today, but I cut stone all day. Muddy. But yeah, got some nice slabs done. Uh, discs and slabs ready. Uh, the slabs. Slab here. Slab here. I've been over here while the saw's been running, adding, look, I joined this body with this head. I'm going to make this just like a little amulet piece. This one, it's going well. Oh man, I'm just discovering that you can have so much detail in the wax. We have, um, this is like Kurawai cloak, but it's also meant to be Huia. So it's like Huia and Manaya flying over the back. And then, um like the Kurawai, and then here there are Manaya shoulders. Um, got another Heitiki form on the tummy. It's kind of like the fingers pulling, but also the beak, and then the, you know, the tongue coming out. Oh, so cool. I undercut everything. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna do this guy with the upside down head. And then here with the, the feet coming up this way, got the hands as well. The shoulders are hands. These are, it's kind of like mixing up all the things. We've got the belt, double belly button, the rib cage, fingers. Um, yeah, that should be quite cool. But yeah, it's really fun to work. My, as you can see, my bench is getting nice. <laughs> Chaotic. <sighs> All right, Monday morning. Time to get back into it. I ran the saw on Saturday. I had a day off. So, so tired. Anyway, going through the gate. <clears throat> Can uncover the saw. It's that spinner. I've started switching the heads on them, so you can see, so I'm going to be like, I've been cutting them with this and I've been moving the heads around and then I'm going to glue, I've got all this wax and then I'm going to glue all the heads on like I've done here, see, started to shape it again a little bit and then um, over here, so then like this body, I'm going to do this head, like that, and then I'm going to do this one, with this head, in here, and then I'm going to make Ponamu handles for that, um, yeah, bases, Ponamu bases for this one. Maybe I'll find a way to put some cabochons. Once this is glued, I can put some cabs. Yeah, maybe I'll put cabs in here and here like I did some of the other ones. And then this one, I'm going to put this guy on up on this. So it's like a long pose. Like this. Oh, uh, yeah, like this. And I can make um, handles out of Ponamu and wood and stuff. That's pretty exciting. So then, so this is doubled, doubled, doubled. Yeah, that one's been times five. And there it goes. You're starting to create an amazing collection. Once these are all been cast, I will master them and then reprint them and then just continue and continue to manipulate them. I want to build a really interesting body of my interpretation of this form. It's like a long-term study, almost. Um, and I can just imagine these long bases where they're all like sitting 
all these different Ponami beautiful eyes, um, you know, like as display pieces, or they can be one-off pieces of jewelry. And if people want different things, like I can customize everything once they are in their um, next state of bronze and wax. And it's very exciting for me. Um, I've made so many carvings over the years, over the years, and honestly, um, I probably documented only a small portion. And this is a bit of a journey for myself of exploring and seeing what I make over time a bit. I'm still focusing on my other mahi, I'm mainly doing like the discs and that sort of thing at the moment. But um, yeah, this is really, really inspiring me at the moment. This is crazy. Later, still cutting, carving wax. Honestly, I've been so excited for this. I cannot wait for more of these to be finished. This is, as you can see, Ponamu. Where is this guy? Hold on. Ah, uh, here, here, look. <laughs> so good. I love that small thing head. Hey, Tiki boy. Come on in here, bro. This is a seahorse that got cast. It's a bit later in the day. Managed to cut a lot more stone. I'll show you that. But I also managed to attach some different heads. So this is one. Just trying to be really careful to clean under here and keep my, my head form. Now I'll come back and put the detail. Just get the flow back. Need to like put a little bit more wax in that shoulder. This one here. This one turned out quite cool. Look at this. So I'll just come and scrape the wax to make that all nice and clean feeling. This one's pretty awesome head. And then I got this one on. Like this. Might put a little bit more wax. Yeah, no, I will. Yeah, put a bit more wax in there um, tomorrow. And then I'm going to make handles for these out of Ponamu. So... And this one, this one here, so this one's like a big po, so I'm going to make, and this one also can go on a handle as well, but I'm going to make, um, yeah, a whole bunch of Ponamu handles for these, and these will be cast in bronze, and then I'll put some inserts as well, like we've seen already this guy. So these are the changed ones. Um, was there anything more? And then, oh yeah, over here. This one. Move the head across on that one. This brings different character and life to each of them. It's pretty cool. And like, I think these little ones are definitely going to put detail all over them before they're cast again. And then go a bit further on this one. This purposely making the head unsymmetrical, asymmetrical, um, just to bring flow and remove. Like this bit where here wasn't fully symmetrical, and I just decided that it will still work rather than I didn't want to take too much away from the exterior form that I was working with. Instead, like at lots of these, if you look. The, um, each side is actually quite different. Like, look, this one's obviously broken some, but if you look at the geometry, like from here to here, and then here to here, you know. Uh, again, here, this is this one's quite strong. This one's thin here. It's very thick here, so you know it's common. I just leave this page open and I like to work on it as inspiration. Um, 
yeah so that's that little update and then over here um this is what's happened to that rock that was outside it's all there and then there is the rest of it as you can see so over the next few days they will start to get shaped into all the rest of the discs We've got a whole lot of jobs that we're doing for some um, special groups of people. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. You'll see the finishes on those. And then these sorts of things will be continued to work on. I managed to pack up the saw today. Um, probably won't need to cut stone for a little while as well. So yeah, that's cool. End of another day. Get further on these. I'm really liking this. Some cool progression on here. This one is, um, so you can see here, uh, Tafiri Matia. So I put a capuchon in here. It's like the wind god. Sucking the wind. Um, worked a bit on the back here, blending that in. Um, I'm going to leave this one until all four of these are done. And then I'm going to observe the four and I'm going to make, I might take one element of every single one and make this the central one. Um, because it'll be the last one that I make, so it can look like this, and maybe put this one here. Yeah, something, something like this. I'm gonna do a stand and have them all on, and then they can all be as well be individually wearable. Um, this one here, I'm going to hollow into the back here and then put a attachment and a hole in here so then the string goes up and this clicks in up a, into here and then so I'll just ball out a whole lot of that. Um, Alright, good morning, yo. Yeah, my phone died while I was recording last night. Anyway, I was just updating on on this. So right now, I'm feeling inspired by this one. Gonna work on this. These ones are all super close. I need to put a a cutaway vest here up on this corner, and I need to fill this little hole. I don't think I want that hole there. Um, yeah, gotta get to this one eventually. So yeah, update on that. Stone is like I said, cut. <laughs> really kind of procrastinating that i'm not gonna lie um yeah so i'll check back in in a couple hours <laughs>